Hey YouTube people, today we're looking at the Surface Pro 9 along with eGPU. Now everybody's eGPU that they might have is kind of different. I'm personally using an Oros gaming box that was originally a 1080 that I upgraded to a 3060 and then a 3060 Ti. So it is fairly powerful, it's very compact. But in this video I'm going to show you uh, three things. Uh, the first of which is what I had to do to make the Surface Pro 9 work with my eGPU because I did run into quite a few blue screen issues that I did not have on the Surface Pro 8. So that's interesting. Uh, I will show you at the end of the video how to fix those issues if you're interested. Um, so when you're setting up your own eGPU, you can kind of use that as a guide, but most of you probably are just here to look at the performance and see what the deal is with, with eGPU and maybe consider it for yourself. Uh, so let's look at some benchmarks and then I'll talk to you about where an external GPU really shines along with the Surface Pro 9 and the best way to kind of approach eGPU because it is different than just a standard gaming laptop in a few ways. So first of all, let's get to the benchmarks. So again, keep in mind this is uh, going to be mainly a comparison uh, of the Surface Pro 8 and the Surface Pro 9 using the same external GPU. And unfortunately, I don't have a ton of benchmarks on this, but enough to kind of show some valid uh, conclusions. So for example, uh, when using stock, the Surface Pro 8, uh, we're looking at kind of my benchmark database. Uh, and with the Surface Pro 8, a 3D Mark time spike, we scored 8,096. And the GPU score was 8,999. CPU score was 5,162. Now, if we compare that to the Surface Pro 9 at stock, you can see we have a full, you know, 800 points higher, 8899 on the score. But if we analyze that a little further, the GPU score didn't really improve. It improved a tiny bit, uh, but where we really saw the gains is in the CPU score. Now, this falls right along with uh, the fact that we've got 10 cores instead of a quad core, and it's Alder Lake, and it's quite a bit faster. Uh, in fact, if you look at the, the performance increase between Surface Pro 8 and Surface Pro 9, uh, when the CPU is heavily involved in those graphics, uh, we went 7953 uh, versus the 5162. And if we pull a calculator out, 7953 over 5162, that's a full 54% improvement uh, when you're heavily limited by the by the CPU itself. So there's a massive uptick. And this is what I kind of felt in my experience, which I'll get to uh, in just a little bit about how the GP, eGPU felt on the Pro 9 versus the Pro 8. So the Pro 9, we've got a few other benchmarks here to show you. Um, for example, here we have a... Final Fantasy 15 benchmark score, which netted us uh, 9,075, which is pretty decent. We'll compare that to some other devices in a second. And the Surface Pro 9 Shadow of the Tomb Raider uh, had a 76 average frame per second with 240 uh, GPU score as the max, and the minimum was 132. Unfortunately, because I don't have the Pro 8 anymore, I don't have comparisons for those two benchmarks, but I do have a lot of comparisons with other devices, which let's look at here now. Okay, so looking at Time Spies, uh, Surface Pro 9 with that eGPU, I put some overclock figures as well in here. A Little bit of gain, uh, not, not too much. Uh, but that puts us in line with the Zephyrus G14 2022 with a 6800S GPU, a very similar result. Um, and if we compared it to something like the Surface Laptop Studio, you can see that the Laptop Studio is only getting 5216, where our Pro 9 is getting closer to 9,000. So we're getting quite a bit higher performance uh, on this eGPU versus what you'd get on a Surface Laptop Studio. Comparing it to something like uh, the Z13 tablet from Asus, which is also a kickstand device, um, it actually scored quite a bit higher. Its CPU is a 12900H versus the 1255U that we have on the Surface Pro 9. And it scores quite a bit better, especially on the CPU end with the 13901. So um, 
That's our time spy. Let's go down and look at Final Fantasy uh, 15 benchmark. We get around 9,000 points on the Surface Pro 9. That puts us in realm of the either the Zephyrus G14 3060, very close to that, and the 2022 version with the 6700S. Now, something like the X13 or X16 uh, mobile still scores quite a bit higher. You know, those Final Fantasy 15 benchmarks uh, on the high end, the Z13 gets 13402, so that's a, quite a bit quicker. Um, and the X16, 12997. The X13 with XG Mobile, 13,000. So quite a bit higher than our Surface Pro 9 score here. But, you know, keep in mind, you can put any GPU on your Surface Pro 9. This just happens to be my 3060 Ti. Uh, so really, it's just it's just going to show what you can do with a, with a pretty generic range eGPU. And it can be pretty competitive uh, with gaming laptops, gaming solutions. So... Let's talk about where eGPU has limits because I want to temper everyone's expectations with this thing because if you have even a 3080 or a 3090 eGPU attached to your Surface Pro 9, it, there's, there's still, it's not going to necessarily perform at the desktop level. Um, and why that is, is there's limited bandwidth on eGPU. Uh, you supposedly have a 40 uh, gigabit per second lane, but a lot of times that's split out to use USB ports um, and some other little things for, that take up overhead. And sometimes you really are limited down to uh, a lot of times like 22 gigabits per second, even though it's a 40 gigabit lane. Um, you're, you don't have the full bandwidth that you get on something like a real gaming laptop, which is connected via PCIe Express and can really go much faster. So what your strategy should be with an eGPU is um, not to try to hit super high frame rates. And what I mean by that is your eGPU, it just struggles, especially in things like virtu virtual, <laughs> especially in things like virtual reality where you wanna be going at 90, 120, 144 frames per second. That's kind of this, you know, where you want to be on those types of things. And the eGPU just can't get those levels of latency. The Thunderbolt overhead kind of adds that in. It doesn't matter as much on traditional, you know, pancake games. And what I mean by that is like 3D games, which are 2D on your screen, if that makes any sense. Um, yeah, so pancake game, traditional 3D game. So, um, <clears throat> but... I guess what I'm saying is, if you have an eGPU, you're much better served to try to push your resolution, push your uh, quality up as high as it can go, and have it running at 60 frames per second looking really nice, rather than try to lower your settings and boost it into 240 hertz territory. Now, that is kind of uh, the the problem with eGPU is, is you just have a harder time pushing really high frame rates on it. It can do it depending on the game, but, uh, and it's just weird. Performance is weird with an, with an external GPU. Sometimes uh, a, a certain game may perform at half the performance for no real reason, and the other games are performing almost at full performance. And it's really hard, except on a case-by-case -case basis, to know whether your eGPU is gonna perform well inside a given application. Um, but let's talk about Pro 8 versus Pro 9. Now, I tried to use uh, an eGPU with my Surface Pro 8 as like my, I'm going to use this for everything. And I did run into issues with it. Um, and some of it was the, was the overhead from Thunderbolt. But that combined with a relatively, you know, weak CPU meant that I wasn't getting the best experience with the eGPU on the Surface Pro 8. It was enough that I was like, eh, I don't, I don't want to use this full time. And I stuck with the X13 because it had the powerful external GPU um, connected over PCI Express and it seemed to work quite a bit better. And where you where you really see, it's really hard to show this in benchmarks, but with the eGPU on the Surface Pro 9, the CPU is just that much more powerful 
and have that much more lanes of overhead uh, to apply to, you know, if you're running virtual uh, desktop or sorry, if you're running a VR with Quest Link, not only are you having to render the game, but you're also having to process the frames and rebroadcast them over uh, the link cable, which means that the Surface Pro 8 just really struggled with it because it, A, it only had four cores. So that really put some overhead and made it not work quite as well as you'd expect it to. But what I'm seeing with the Pro 9 is the minimum uh, frame rates in games are a lot better. It's not kind of cramping down and really having issues uh, with slowdowns nearly as much as the Pro 8 did. And uh, in fact, it, I, it, it's directly related to having way more cores to work with and those performance cores uh, do perform quite a bit better. And especially when you're not needing to use the onboard iGPU, you're offloading all the GPU tasks to that external one. It has the entire uh, framework, uh, the entire uh, thermal envelope to apply to CPU performance. And it does a pretty decent job. And uh, so for those reasons, I, I'm at the point where I feel like, okay, I actually could use this Surface Pro 9 full time with an eGPU and it's not going to affect me uh, nearly as much as the Pro 8 did because the Pro 8 kind of had these little stuttering issues um, here and there. Uh, enough of an inconvenience where I didn't want to use it. But the Pro 9, some of those exact same applications now work even better. So uh, there's definitely uh, a much better experience on the Pro 9 with the eGPU. So those are my thoughts using external GPU. Now, if you, in this section of the video, if you need some help getting your eGPU set up because it's blue screening on you. Uh, <laughs> when I first started, I plugged in my eGPU, uh, went to install the drivers, immediately blue screen. In fact, it wouldn't even boot. So uh, let's talk about uh, the, the three things you need to do uh, in order to improve the performance. And uh, shout out to the website eGPU.io, great resource there. Um, the three things that I did to make my eGPU work well, and since I've done this, no issues whatsoever, is one, adjust your PCI Express power settings and disable any power saving settings on it. Two, adjust the registry to apply uh, some timing differences. And three, you have to disable core isolation memory. And you have to do that not only in the UEFI, but also uh, in the Windows settings. But I will show you exactly how to do that right now. Now, if you just want to see this per performance, we're done with that. And the rest of this video is going to be just talking about how to get your eGPU running. So let's take a look. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is open up our power plan. So we're going to click edit power plan. And then you're going to change advanced power settings. You're going to look for PCI Express. In here, there's link state power management, and you want to change both of these to off. The next step is going to be editing the registry. In order to do this, you want to open up Registry Editor. You can type regedit. You need administrative privileges to do this. We're going to navigate to the location mentioned here in the video, HK Local Machine, System, Current Control Set, Control, Graphics Drivers. And then you're going to add two keys. <clears throat> you want to add them as new DWORD 32-bit values. And it's going to be capital TDR delay. We're going to change it to decimal, and we're going to enter 10. Then we're going to do the same thing for the next value, which is TDR DDI delay and you're going to change it to decimal and give it a value of 20. This next step is really important. My eGPU literally would not work without performing this step. Uh, to, to correct this, we need to disable core isolation, but we have to go to recovery and then advanced startup. Our goal in doing this is, is simply getting into the BIOS. Once advanced startup is started, you want to click troubleshoot. 
Advanced Options, and UEFI Firmware Settings. And you have to restart again to enter this mode. Once you're there, you want to click on Secured Core and disable it. You do this by dragging. You can't just tap it. you got to drag it. And then at this point, uh, you can restart. We're not done yet, though, because once you're back into Windows, you still need to actually toggle the setting inside Windows. So you're going to open up your settings, and you're going to search for Core Isolation. And now you can turn off memory integrity. And that is the magic bullet to make your eGPU work correctly. All right, so that's it. That's how you can get your eGPU going. From that point, just install your graphic drivers as normal from NVIDIA or AMD, and you should be on your way. If you found this video helpful, go ahead and subscribe, leave a like and a comment, and we'll see you on the next Surface Pro video.